Welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal. I'm your host going over shark attacks from the 1900s till present, mostly large sharks. And we'll get started uh, with attacks in a little bit. We're going to talk about sharks a little bit more here, a little bit of mistaken identity talk. Um, Sharky here. This is our buddy. Um, we went over the fins and everything. It does have taste buds in the roof of its mouth and on its tongue. And the way that the shark floats, 40 about 40% of the body it looks like, but anyway, up to 25% of the weight of a great white shark is made up of its liver. Um, the liver puts out liver oil, which is four times lighter than seawater, and that's how they can stay kind of neutral in the water, and they kind of fly through the water by bending their body, these, these fins, they do their turns, they can turn on themselves. So uh, they're kind of crazy creatures, but I wanted to get into that, that the livers, and I read somewhere once that uh, sharks, these great whites are limited to 23 feet. And their reasoning was that any bigger of a shark, the weight would be too much for any liver oil to make up. So you can make the, the shark bigger and the liver bigger, but it can't make, make enough oil to keep that shark afloat and it'll just sink. So I've heard that 23 feet is the maximum. Um, I don't know where the source is. I read that somewhere way back in the past and I've always put the limit on great whites at 23 feet. Still do to this day. Um, get into some stats from our boy H. David Baldrige. Um, 161 attacks they looked at. Now these are all attacks. He doesn't have, you know, we're going six feet and over on sharks. We'll get into that in a little bit here too. Um, in 161 attacks he looked at pre-1968 were the shark behavior, pre-behavior of the shark. So the shark was seen before it attacked. 161 attacks and 66 attacks. Here's our shark here, here's our victim. The shark made a straight shot at the victim. It didn't veer, it didn't do anything. It just made a straight shot at the victim and attacked them. Even 22 of those times passing up people that are real close. So it's passing people and going straight to the person. That's 66 out of 161 attacks they looked at. And 33 more, the shark circled him. So shark circling the guy, or the victim, and 33 out of 166 attacks. There's already 90 of the attacks. That's a majority of the attacks where it just makes a beeline, passing people up in, in, in a third of the cases, and circling the shark 30 of the times. Uh, about 10 times the shark was seen following close behind the person before it attacked. Uh, immediately prior to the attack. Uh, five times it was seen swimming erratically, 25 times it was doing nothing out of the ordinary and just went up and bit the person. Um, kind of interesting stats to me. I always wondered how they go and you know, that's, they looked at 530 attacks, they only had 161 where they had clear view of the shark before the attack. So most of them they didn't even see. But you gotta kind of think that most of the attacks are kind of running the same line there. Um, I highly doubt these straight line attacks are mistaken identity. I don't think when they circle them they're mistaken identity. I don't think a lot of these are. Um, H. David Baldrige doesn't bring up um, mistaken identity when he talks about these sharks. He talks about are they trying to feed when they're attacking and he doesn't think they are all the time or most of the time but he doesn't bring up mistaken identity as the alternative. Now we've looked at, uh, we've heard about uh, the attacks where people have defended themselves um, with weapons and 60 out of 160 or so attacks, um, the shark didn't care that they were using it. Just kept doing what it was doing. Those can't be mistaken identity. You're, you're, getting, you're getting a weapon that's hitting you. I mean, they don't see any of these. Their prey don't carry weapons. They don't hold things. I don't buy that they can't tell the difference. Um, so those 60 right there, those aren't mistaken identity. Ah, the mistaken identity, we're going to get into that real quick. This is a show, um, I decided I wanted to make it large sharks. Now if I made it what I consider large sharks, it would be 10 feet and over. I understand 6 feet, 8 feet, those are large sharks, but I'm 6 feet tall. I mean, I'm not getting in the water with these things, but 10 feet and over, they're, they're you know, really big. They get a, especially the great whites, they get a bunch of weight on them after 10 feet. So I would put it at 10 feet. But then I started the show, started looking. Quite a few were individual shark, six feet. Uh, it's the smallest I've seen, could snap limbs, uh, 
Frederick Bergstaller had a six foot bull that, you know, bit him in the arm, bit his, I believe bit his arm off. It, it ate him and, you know, he was done. They went out and helped him, but he was done by one shark, a six foot shark. So sharks start out that, that are biting people. They're about two feet. So they go up to 23 feet, we'll say. I put it at six feet. That's large sharks. That's adding a lot of small sharks, in my opinion, to my stats. But they're stats on large sharks. Um, I don't study small sharks. Smaller shark attacks, these eight footers, nine footers, they weren't in my books, not a lot of them. Most of the attacks I knew, they were huge sharks, you know, 12, 13, 15 footers and bigger. Uh, so when I go over the smaller sharks, they're new to me. But smaller than that sharks, uh, I, all sharks, we're gonna make some assumptions. I'm gonna make them right now. That most sharks attacks are by smaller sharks that we're not covering. Four feet and under. Um, we'll cover five footers if they're the great white, the tiger, um, the bull shark, but we're not gonna cover a bunch of small sharks. They can't kill you. If they can't drag you out, they can't bite your arm off, I'm not gonna cover them. They're not right for my show. We're finding out stats on large sharks. Um, so having said all that, then we have our parameters at six foot shark and up. And we're keeping stats on six foot sharks and up. Most attacks, I would say three to one. I would say we're gonna be covering about 1,200 to 1,400 attacks on this large sharks. And there's gonna be probably 2,800 to 3,500 of the smaller sharks. So th almost three to one. Three small attacks to one large attack. Most of those small attacks, even these small, I, I read one about a four foot tiger, um, grabbed a boy's leg, did some pretty bad damage, but didn't, you know, it wasn't a fatality. It's a four foot shark, didn't snap his leg off or anything. Um, most of those are gonna be mistaken identity, especially your non-tiger bull and white. They're seeing a flash of skin. They're seeing your hand, um, a tan line. They're seeing something that's making them think that it's a fish. Quick bite and a quick release. Most of them can't even, you know, they can remove fingers or toes. That's pretty much the extent, and you know, the majority of attacks are in Florida. Those are majority small sharks. Majority non-life-threatening attacks. So, when you hear that most shark attacks are mistaken identity, you gotta understand what's happening. When people, you know, biologists, I would hope zoologists, let's say they study tigers, I hope when people are asking them about, you know, attacks and fatalities, they're not throwing in the house cats and meerkats in with their stats. Yet, they're doing that with sharks. You're talking about, let's talk about Mr. Nellis for a minute. You're talking about a guy that was just eaten by a shark. And you're going to bring up stats that are only true because you're adding most of those small sharks. Why you would talk about these small sharks that can't kill a person when a person's been eaten is beyond me. It's not scientific. You've got to set parameters. If you don't set parameters, there's nothing you can do. So uh, that's the thing with mistaken identity that people are saying, that's true. But it's not true in our world. We've covered 180 of these attacks. Um, I welcome you to go through them and see how many of them are you consider a mistaken identity. Uh, we've had quite a few fatalities, quite a few where they'll eat people. And uh, what we're ending up getting at is that uh, you remove boards and juveniles and mistaken identity is not even involved in large sharks, period. So mistaken identity is a thing, it has happened. Lewis Bourne, another guy had been bit through his back. If it wasn't for an inch of his board, it would have removed that, just like Lewis Bourne. Um, I think Maria Korsmaros, she was in real murky water when she was out there test swimming. That was mistaken identity, I believe. They're, you know, they chew them up a little bit and spit them out. They don't have to be fought off or anything. They just, it's murky water. They didn't know what they did. They bit you. So I think she was a great white. I put that down as mistaken identity. Um, but you got to realize what's going on. Nowhere in biology, let's say, or the study of animals, do they look at all the animals together like they do with sharks. There's hundreds of different sharks. Um, most of these large shark attacks, there's three or four that could have done the attacking. Yet you're adding in stats with a little two-foot dogfish. So I don't let dogfish stats in when you're talking about a... Somebody's going to ask me about a large shark attack. 
um, especially like Nellis. I'm going to bring up uh, Lloyd Skinner, uh, Tina Webb, uh, Shirley Durden, Robert Bartle. These are large sharks. These are similar attacks. The attack in the kelp beds we just covered, they're the same thing. So I don't sit here and look at this and try to think like a shark. Others are trying to do this. They're trying to think like a shark. They're not giving you any stats. Nobody's asking them, well, what's the statistics on large sharks? Like the one that just ate them. They're just taking these stats, they give them and run with them. Well, you're talking about dogfish. So uh, that's what I wanted you to know about mistaken identity and why it's coming up all the time is because unlike with anything else, you know, tigers, lions, bears, anything, they don't add the smaller sharks to it, the, the, smaller, the smaller species to it. They keep it controlled so that they can see stat statistics. I'm talking about little two fish, uh, two foot long sharks, weighing what, 10 pounds, to something that weighs a car that just ate somebody, it makes no sense. That isn't science. Um, so I don't know who, you know, after these attacks comes out and says mistaken identity, but if they are, that's exactly what they're doing. Talking dogfish stats, stats with somebody that's just been eaten. So I uh, wanted to go over that and we'll get to a couple of attacks here. We'll put our buddies away okay. and I'm time for see a, a little uh, look at mistaken identity. People think, you know, we with our arms and our legs sticking out. We look like a seal that, you know, it's a body and then a, then a flipper. One flipper, not two flippers. Just one flipper, but it comes right off the body. We have legs and then flippers. I think they can tell. We have arms. They, you know, they're little wing things. They don't look nothing like our arms. They're too short. Uh, we get on boards. I do think that they think that we're sea lions, especially the juveniles. But put on a wetsuit. Oh, they suddenly think we're seals. Why don't sharks attack manatees then? A manatee looks much more like a sea lion or an elephant seal than will ever look like uh, either of those or a, or a seal. Even on a board, uh, uh, a board with arms and legs sticking out doesn't look as much like their food as a manatee, yet they don't touch them. There's probably a time when they did touch them, when they did eat them um, long ago. Uh, they finally found their first case, at least I didn't look at the date on it. When I looked into manatees, because I know they don't get attacked by great whites especially, they don't touch them. Looks like a tiger bit one that was alive, uh, a tiger shark. Over in the West Indies, they found two bite marks on a living manatee. That's their first case of a living manatee being bitten by a shark, any shark, yet. Yet, they think we're a seal, and that's why they're biting us. You know, in, in those cases and the, the stats of uh, the shark attack filed back in Baldrige's day, 85% of attacks were on people not in wetsuits. How do you explain all those? And whatever, what were they thinking those people were? But again, it's probably mixing in the dogfish stats with everything else. We're going to separate all that. That's what the show is for to get through that. But uh, isn't that interesting that they don't attack manatees and they somehow attack us because they think we're their food? No, I don't buy it. it. It doesn't make any sense. And we also found out we're the ketchup sandwich. The manatee is the grub on the ground that they don't want to eat. That's it. We'll move on. Okay, now we're going to head over to Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, the date is September 21st, 1931. Gertrude Holiday is out doing, taking a swim. Uh, she's about 200 feet from shore and she's swimming along and a large fish attacks her. Uh, she didn't know it and she looks down and she sees next to her there's a large fish. Um, eight foot fish, eight foot shark sitting next to her. She turned to go swim back to shore and she noticed blood behind her. So she'd bit, bit, bitten not once but twice and she didn't even know it. Um, she's already bleeding and this shark is just kind of laying right next to her. She screamed for help pushed off the shark, she has abrasions from the skin of the shark on her body, and starts swimming to shore. Lifeguard starts swimming out to her and the shark is following her right behind her, all the way in. The shark follows her so far in that everybody on the beach can see that it's an eight foot hammerhead shark that had just bitten her twice. Um, he gets there, scared the shark away with just splashing the water and then took her in. Um, Crazy, you know, we talk about hammerheads, do they attack you? Yeah, they'll attack, they'll bite people. 
Um, not usually fatal, but we're going to get into one next. So that's an attack on Gertrude Holiday. We're going to put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. Okay, now we're going to finish off this abbreviated show uh, with the worst uh, hammerhead attack in history. And there's no doubt in my mind this is it. Um, in 1834, uh, it says in Tahiti or another location, so they don't know. Two ships had met up, and a ship called the Japan had met up with the Erie, and the Erie had Captain Spooner in charge of it at the time. Um, they had met up, and they had met Captain Spooner's new wife. She was uh, Kagatava Ororotum. Ororotum. Um, weird last name, but Kagatava was his new wife, and she was American Indian, a shore and headdress in a picture. Um, an old drawing, and they got into the South South American waters, and I believe it was South, South American waters, but they got down there, and she decided she was going to jump into the water and show him how great of a swimmer she was. So she dies off the Erie, and she starts swimming, and she's doing all this enchanting swimming for him as he's watching, and probably others are watching up on deck. And, uh, uh, a hammerhead shark, a giant hammerhead shark. These things go 20 feet. Um, not as beefy as a great white, but they're pretty beefy on their own when they get 20 feet and their mouths are huge. Came up and bit her in half with one bite, and then with the next two bites had swallowed her, all of her. She was gone. They said they swallowed her in two mouthfuls, is what it says in the papers. So um, that's 1834. That's an attack and a predation, but that's not going to go in our books. We're 1,900 to present large sharks that we're keeping track of. Um, stats are back up. The website's up. Stats are up there. I have not altered them yet. I've got the one attack here, and I've got three more shows of attacks I have to add to it. Um, I'm going to add depth, uh, temperature of water. I'm going to add, you know, if they used a weapon or not, and the success or not of that. I'm going to add... Uh, eye gouging, uh, you know, gouging in my eye, hitting them in the gills, hitting them in the head, where they had to defend themselves and get the shark to release. Well, I want that in there too. Um, but I believe there's another thing I'm going to add, a thing or two. So that's going to be a work in progress, but it's always going to be up there. I'm hoping the download button works for it. I haven't checked into that yet. If that works out and you can download it, that's great because it's always going to change. So I'll give you a heads up every time that I make an alteration to it that's uh, pretty significant where I add a new, uh, new attack data to it or like I'm going to add a new categories to it. And uh, we'll go from there. And thank you for watching. As always, I love having you here. Wanted to have that discussion about mistaken identity and what you know what I see is going on with that. Um, two different worlds. You're talking all sharks. You know, talk large sharks. And if you're going to talk about a shark that ate somebody, at least talk about something that's comparable in size. Um, if you're not, you might probably don't know it. Um, H. David Baldrich. I had went over the shark anatomy. He said most of what they know of sharks was, uh, and their intelligence was skewed because they used the dogfish and the spotted dogfish. And, uh, you know, those are very primitive sharks, not very intelligent. And I think that's what, you know, most of marine biology is used to, the kind of sharks that they can go and, you know, work with. You can't go and work with a large bull, a large tiger, a large great white. Um, that's why not a lot's known about them in nature. You just aren't going to know. So I think that they're finding out about other species of shark and spreading it out, and you can't do that. Uh, open ocean sharks, even large ones, 10, 12 footers, they act differently than these big sharks when they get on, on shore, you know, up close to swimmers. So um, we'll pay attention to all that stuff. Uh, so join me again. We'll be back in a couple of days. But as always, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.